Imagine you have a choice between $100 right now, this is money now, you can take it, or $100 that's later. This is money later, that's a no-brainer. Money now is gonna win every time. There's gonna be inflation by the time you get that. And think of what you could do with money now. Money now, every single time. But what if, tell you what, I got some quarters here. What if I gave uh, another, another dollar on this side? Do you want to take that money later? That's now $101. Oh, wait, I'll tell you what, $102. Or oh, rather, how much money would I have to put over here? What if, you know what, 50 bucks. Give me back the dollar, give it back. Thank you, there's a 50. What if it was $150 in a year? Well, obviously now you're gonna pick money later. So the question is, how do you calculate the benefits of money now versus more money later. And this is the exact problem that faced the city of Chicago in the year 2008. They were considering leasing their parking meters to a private company to get a lot of delicious money now. But they had to weigh that up against just keeping the parking meters and earning money later. So we're gonna have a closer look at the calculation Hey there, stand-up math heads. I'm Raleigh Williams from the YouTube channel Climate Town, and I am pleased as punch to tell you that I've recently purchased a couple of minutes on every stand-up maths video for the next 75 years. Yeah, I just reached out to one of Matt's producers, offered him a little bit of that money now, and for three generations, I now get to reap the benefits of Matt's delicious math brain. You see, what Matt didn't realize was that his video about parking meter math had swerved directly into the oncoming traffic of my video about USA Freedom Math. So thanks so much for tuning in to a very special episode of Stand Up Maths Town, all about the time Chicago got absolutely hosed when they sold control of their parking meters and streets to Morgan Stanley. And I know Matt lives in like the Tower of London in France or wherever, but I'm sure he won't mind joining me on a little trip to Chicago through the magic of editing. Magic of editing. <laughs> so much effort for a joke. I can't, I've got a family at home. Hey, we can complain. Do you know what the commute is? Is it zero hours? It's more than zero. I knew you'd only say it if it was a lot or a little. Oh. Look, we can just knock this thing out in 30 or 40 hours and then we can get you home to your alleged family, man. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, okay, so today we're gonna look at parking meters in Chicago. That's with, how with you the do your intro? Yeah, 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 I say a concept, leave a beat, opening tiles. In America, we do it like this. Hey, I'm Raleigh Williams and this is Michael Parkenberger and this is Stand Up Math Town. Climate, Climate. Town. <laughs> Just go ahead and tape this bad boy on. It just looks more professional getting, with the blue tape. I'm getting so little money. This is appropriate. Hey, you're getting zero dollars. Zero dollars. That's what your producer so, and so, I agreed to. So, 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 you signed it. I know, and I tried to do the math, but you kept shouting USA. USA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's not, not how, how we, we do, do things it in America. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then I had very little warning. I signed a thing. So that's a legally binding contract in this side of the Mason Dixon. <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, let me just go ahead and take you to a beautiful little time known as the year 2008. Ah yes, 2008. What a year. The Apple App Store hit the internet, Barack Obama was sworn in as president, and America's tallest fish, Michael Phelps, won eight gold medals at the Olympic Games. <laughs> No relevant backstory. Absolutely. Okay. Because a financial crisis is brewing. And don't even ask, because no one knows how it started. No one knows which country is most I'm responsible. Pretty sure with the mortgage-backed securities. Yeah. One very it's specific It's really country. tough to it tell. Is. It could have been any Lehman Brothers. The point is, it was happening, and no one knows whose fault it was. Practically every city on earth was hurt by this mysterious financial crisis of 2008, and Chicago was no exception. They needed to fill a $150 million hole in their city budget. Now, they could raise property taxes, but that wouldn't be very popular with the voters. So their intrepid mayor, Richard M. Daley, decided to sell the city's parking meters and their commensurate road space to a private company. That's right, 36,000 parking meters would be privately owned. 36,161. Wow. I looked it up. You've done your research. Just that one bit. Wow, Matt, very cool. 
Do you know how much the winning bid was? Uh, millions. Technically, yes. Thank you. Morgan Stanley and the Emir of Abu Dhabi purchased all of the meters in Chicago for $1.157 billion for billion. 75 years. Billion with a B. Billion with a B. 75, 75 years. 75 with the numbers, seven and five, and then years just spelled normally. And then we're gonna whip out of this. Oh, I'm, okay, ready? Yep. And $1.157 billion. Now, $1.157 billion certainly sounds like a lot of money, but it's not immediately obvious how much 36,000 parking meters take in over the course of a 75-year contract, especially when Morgan Stanley had plans to quadruple the rates, extend the meter hours. They had a real vision to extract a lot of value out of this lease. That's right. So was 1.157 enough money? It turns out the answer is super no. Now, this is gonna have a lot of important math questions that only you can handle. This is my time to shine. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna have a closer look at the mathematics of the deal. And then we do a wipe. Nice. Very professional. And then the wipe happens? Yeah, the wipe nice. is it, yeah. I love that. For Chicago to be able to calculate how much money they would need to get now to justify giving up all parking revenue for the next 75 years, they need two things factored in. First of all, how much will that revenue be? And secondly, how much is it worth to get the money up front as opposed to across 75 years? In terms of revenue, in 2008, their consultant worked out a range of possible rates. First of all, they decided the first four years of the lease would be a write-off because of the amount of capital investment that was required from year five onwards they would get between 85 and 130 million dollars per year and that would increase three percent per year which was just what they assumed inflation would be across the remaining whatever that is 70 odd years of the lease. In 2009, when the Inspector General did their comprehensive investigation into this terrible, terrible deal, they split that range into subcategories. They said the 85 million a year was pessimistic. You then had the slightly pessimistic, the slightly optimistic, and the 130 million was fully optimistic. And then for good measure, they put in the exact midpoint as well. So there's our range of possible values. All we have to do now is work out the discount rate of getting the money now, which is slightly more complicated and it occurs to me now that stand-up maths is a subsidiary of the climate town enterprise system I can use all of their conventions and, and video syntax which means I can just do a crash cut to the edit bay To the edit bay, we can now have a close look at how the city of Chicago should calculate a discount rate. That's how much you have to discount money later to make it be worth the same as money now, or rather how much money you'd have to get later to forego money now. And I'm going to base my calculations off this report, which we've already mentioned. It's the Office of the Inspector General, City of Chicago. They had a close look at all of the numbers in 2009. And right at the end here, they show how they actually calculate their recommended discount rate. And you've got to factor in a few things. You've got to factor in inflation, and they assume inflation is going to be 3%. So just every year, everything's going to cost 3% more. That's the amount that money has become devalued. They then look at how much it would cost the city of Chicago to borrow the equivalent money now. So if they turn down money now, and they're gonna wait for money later, what if they realize they actually need it now? They have to borrow it. Well, they looked into here, in this table here. Um, now, if you're a government organization, you can borrow money a lot cheaper. Money is cheap if you're the government. So they took the five years prior to the report, they averaged them, and they got 2.19%. So that's the cost of borrowing money they're gonna use. They didn't have to combine 3% inflation with 2.19% cost of borrowing money. And you think, well, that's easy. That's pretty straightforward maths. Well, they somehow find a way to make it look really complicated. So they, they here they step through just the mechanics of how you combine percentages. So they add one to each and then multiply them and then subtract one because they want to get it without that lead one. Like just ignore the one. That's what we do. It's the same number. Anyway, they work out it's 5.26%. But then they add in a measure of risk. Now, technically, the city shouldn't care about this. 
This is more if you're the person taking on the contract. You want an extra premium because of the risk you're taking on. And I mean, the city could say they don't care, but the inspector general worked it out properly. They, uh, well, they made a number up. Well, that, they took it from some research in Australia, that seems to be about it. And they said that you should add on an extra 1.8%. Just, just add that on to your discount rate so everyone's happy. I guess they want to calculate what's a competitive amount. Like they want this to be an appealing proposition so that someone does buy the contract, but they don't want to make it so appealing, spoiler, that they get terrible, terrible value. So at the end of all the calculations, the discount rate is 7.06%. This is the uh, this is the accumulation projecting into the future for how much it would be worth for different discount rates from 5%, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then how optimistic or pessimistic you are and what the future revenue may be. And uh, these categories, these are 15 million apart. That's, the, that's a unit of optimism. And you need to be really pessimistic and take a 9% discount rate to get the actual value that they ended up taking. Now, if you've watched the companion video to this on the Climate Town channel, which you absolutely should, and subscribe while you're there, great channel, they do some really good stuff, you will know that when I was on that channel, I showed this fantastic plot. This is the amount of value over time, and in the distant future, because the money is so later, it's barely worth anything. So they show in this report that if you just did a half length contract, so if you only did 37 years, you're still going to get $1.08 billion of value. So you're still going to get 93% of the value by doing half the length of the contract. And so you think if you just need a billion bucks, do that. Why do 75 years? But I was looking at this when I was doing it for the um, Climate Town video. And I thought, hang on, could I combine this? Because they've obviously simulated every single year. Could I combine this projection into the future for every year with the table that shows you the different levels of optimism and pessimism with different possible discount rates? So you know, I went and made myself a spreadsheet. Here it is. So I've got uh, your different levels of optimism and pessimism at the top. I've then broken it down for every single year, starting in 2009, all the way down here somewhere. Actually, we can probably zoom in a tad more. Here we go. Here's 2083 at the end of the contract. And I've, this is just the inflation. So I've moved everyone up uh, 3% every year. So there's a few years of no income. Then you've got, this is all in $2,009. It goes up by 3% every year for each of the categories. I've then taken the 7% discount rate. So I've included as well as the inflation. I've got the full discount rate for all the different options. And then I've actually got an accumulation of that to work out the total value in each of these scenarios uh, if you sum all the way down to the year 2083. And I'm close to the official figures. I'm within 5%-ish of each one. But it occurs to me, with all our talk about discount rates, but yet we're increasing things, it might be getting a bit confusing. So I just want to simplify things and have a quick look at an example where you can buy $100 a year income for three years into the future by paying money now. And you might think, well, that's great. That's worth $300, but this income goes up with inflation. Inflation 3%. So after one year, you don't get $100, you get $103 and it goes up by 3% every year. Now, what you pay now to get that income later, you don't just add them together because we have our friend, the discount rate. And up until now, I've been increasing the amount of money you have to get later to compensate for not getting it now. But in reality, you're just going to get the income you're going to get. All you can do is decrease what you pay now. And that's why it's called the discount rate. So after one year, it'll be 7% discount rate. After two years, it'll be, well, it's that twice. 7% to the power of two and then 7% cubed. So inflation, I just did year after year sequentially. You can actually just do each year individually. It makes it a bit easier in the spreadsheet. And we divide by these to lower what the money's worth now compared to getting it later. And if you divide that through, you can see now it's all below $100. And if you add those together, you'll get the amount the income is worth now, which in this specific case is $278.12. And that, that's the number we want. That's what the income is worth based on this expected level of inflation and on the discount rate that we, I don't know, kind of made up. And if we increase that, like here's 8% discount, 
can see the value has gone down. Go up to 9% discount. It's gone down again. So if we actually go back to 8, $273.07. What if we decided 9? And that's why the discount rate is so important. You have to do so many calculations and add it all up. And you can see you're putting on the inflation and then you're actually taking it off again because it's in the discount rate and you can get inflation-free versions where you keep everything in now dollars. It's very complicated. I did my best to try and recreate everything that had happened in the report. And I was close enough. But I was able to simulate everything that's in the report myself. So I've now got year by year breakdowns of everything that they were predicting would happen with the recommended discount rate, which I'm very proud of. It also means that now we can look at any given year in, in what was the future in 2009, but now that a lot of those years are our past, we can compare them. So we can actually take what they predicted would happen and compare it to what happened you know, in reality and see how close the predictions were. So actually, if we head back over to Chicago for this, so hang on, um, let me just skip ahead in the edit. That's me here. This is us chatting about uh, discount rates, blah, 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 in Excel and, uh, oh, here we go. All right, so we'll find out if the predictions is, is what they said accurate or isn't it? It's not. In 2022, the city of Chicago released an audit of all the money taken in by the private parking people up until the year 2021. And it turns out they were making a ton of money. Not only had they already recouped the entire purchase price, on top of that, they've had an extra half a billion dollars of delicious net revenue. And they've still got 63 years of profit coming at them. But okay, they're, they're making money. But does that match the predictions? Well, because I was able to reverse engineer all the calculations in a spreadsheet, I could look at just the predictions up until the year 2021, add them all up, and let's just say they're not in the optimistic category. They're not in any of the prediction categories because they are literally off the chart. They are two steps up, two optimism units above the chart. They've skipped over very optimistic and landed in extremely optimistic. And that includes having a global pandemic when revenues took a dive. Imagine if that hadn't have happened. They're making so much money. And that doesn't even include the fact because they bought a lease at below market rate, they're able to refinance on the correct valuation. They've made another half a billion dollars just from refinancing the assets that they own that the the city basically gave away at a real discount rate. And I would not accept any impossibility argument saying, well, that, you know, the council couldn't have made that much money because they can't like increase rates the same way a private company can. Well, all the rate increases were baked into the lease by the council. The first five years were pre-agreed increases, and after that, the private owners had barely touched parking rates. It was all the council that put the rates up. And there's other ways that the council could have got more money. So when Morgan Stanley took over, only 5% of parking spaces used these pay and display boxes. The rest were meters where you put coins in. If you switch to these, you no longer have to have individually marked bays, one per meter. You can just have an open area. And this increases occupancy by 10% because cars can just squeeze in and cars can no longer use up the money the previous motorist left on the meter. They always have to pay again from scratch. When San Diego switched to these, their revenue went up by 24%. When Boston switched to these, their revenue went up by 34% with no price change. The council left so much money on the table. It's such a bad deal. They should have done more maths and they should have shared that maths with the council so they can make an informed decision and not just have three days to decide what's going to happen over the next 75 years. But enough of the numbers. It has also occurred to me that now that Raleigh has a stake in the Stand Up Mass channel, we should get them to do some of the heavy lifting because it's not just numbers, it's not just finance. There are other implications and impacts on the environmental policy of the city. Now, parking meters are not like hot dog stands. They actually are a vital force in controlling the traffic in any given city. Another problem with giving a private company control of your parking spaces 
is that they're going to want to keep them as parking spaces for 75 years, which of course locks wherever you are into car-centric infrastructure for the foreseeable future. There are actually a ton of pretty negative climate implications in all of this, and we're going to go into all of those on my channel, Climate Town, if that feels like something you might be interested in. It's a really good channel. You should absolutely check it out. I'm in the video as well. He is, and he's really funny in it. He actually houses like a ton of hot dogs. You know what? I think a 75-year contract I have with Stand Up Matt's channel might be a little optimistic given how many hot dogs I just saw Matt eat. So I hereby release him from the contract. But before I go, remember to like and subscribe to Stand Up Matt's terrific channel. Let's cherish Matt while we have him.